Hello YouTube viewers, Cole Nelson here for the Mannequin Education channel. And I haven't made a video for a little while. Um, that's because I recently moved. Um, hopefully now that I've moved I'll be able to make more frequent videos. And for this video, I want to talk about a collaborative project I've been working on with um, Ryan Appleyard and Oscar Mansano. So most of my videos have been dedicated to the historical teaching of, of, of Manichaeism. Well, of course, as, as people know, Manichaeism is a lived religion today in its historic form no longer exists. In parts of South China, there may be remnants of uh, Mingjiao or Monijiao, but that is Manichaeism uh, elements of teaching that have been mixed um, in with indigenous Buddhist and Taoist beliefs. And anyway, the hierarchy, um, the role of the elect, they no longer have an elect class. Um, that lives according to the three seals, these things have been lost with time. So, uh, in collaboration with Oscar Monsano, who's been working on translating and publishing uh, various texts, uh, Manichaean texts, and Ryan Appleyard, who, who writes meditations and leads daily prayer, we've been working on thinking about what a man, modern Manichaean church or community could look like. Um, and as part of that, we've, we've founded a website um, called uh, the Ecclesia, of course that means Church of Light, which um, I encourage you all to visit. It's called www.ecclesia, and that's spelled um, with two K's that we spelled it. We spelled it E K K L E S I A of light.com. I'll put a link down in the video uh, description. So we think it's important to that Manny's teachings continue to have a witness in the present world, and we think it's important that these teachings are relevant to the world we live in today and mindful of the fact that Mani himself taught that each generation as the light would be returned or with, with, withdrawn from this world and stored in the new aeon, that each generation would become weaker because there would be less light in the world, which is, which is on the one hand you know, a, a negative thing because the world will become darker as time goes on. But on the other hand, uh, is a good thing is that is the goal of the salvation process to re, re, retrieve the light from the material world before the, you know, as much as can be before the great eschatological fire, um, you know, which even St. Peter, right, in the, in, in the, the book, of, I think it's Second Peter, it might be First Peter, talks about. Um, that the world, as scripture says, will burn up. And in Manichaean eschatology, that has a great place as it's sort of like a great purgatorial fire. As that light that is still trapped in darkness, at least the vast majority of it, will be, will be withdrawn from the darkness through the purgatorial fire. Um, but that cannot happen until... A, a specific amount of light has been withdrawn and restored to not the realm of light, which is where, where all the light is hoping to go back to eventually and where it's from, but the new aeon, which is a sort of temporary heaven or holding place. So mindful of the fact that we are weaker, you know, there's less light in the world now than there was in the time of Mani and in the Manichaean church, and that's a testimony to the success of the Manichaean church, that so much light was restored um, to the new aeon, was 
uh, ferried by the, the light ships and through the column of light to the new aeon. Uh, that we now live in a time that Manichaeism has been almost forgotten. That is actually somewhat of a testimony to the success in a bizarre way of the Manichaean church. But now, because the message of Mani is timeless, we need to adapt um, the three seals and, and the ritual life of the elect to the modern era um, and, and to human beings' modern uh, capacities. And, and to do this, we are discussing what a modern elect could look like. Um, it's important that we believe that a person, an elect, would live in such a way that they could still, um, through their, their practices, help in the, in the reclamation of light. Um, and also that an elect obviously is part of that. The important part is to refashion oneself into uh, the, the image of Christ, the new man, um, who is the vehicle of the salvation of all light. And a large part of that entails in doing no harm to that light, which is in the material world. So obviously things like at least vegetarianism, you know, uh, not killing or harming animals, these things will remain integral as part of the seal of the hands. You know, we've talked about um, the seal of, of the breast, which uh, traditionally involved absolute celibacy. And we've talked about the importance of not um, trapping light in the material world through procreation. Uh, as the Manichaean Church, obviously, we're going to encourage adoption as a as a alternative to to having one's own children. Although we also understand that although the spirit may be willing, uh, the flesh is weak. So obviously, um, some hearers may still end up having children. Um, uh, this is of course discouraged, but not necessarily you know absolutely prohibited there are ways that one can because we understand the the weakness of of humanity there are ways in which one can to some extent expiate um uh, or um, make uh, amends for this uh sin and um I know historically one thing that Manichaeans often did was practice oblation, which was they would give like one of their children or servants to the church to serve as an elect. Um, so obviously one thing one could do if one had children would be to encourage them to consider the elect life. Um, and the other main thing is just to to support the, the elect. You know, hearers are, are not anticipating um, salvation of themselves in this life. But what they do anticipate is that by assisting the elect in living the elect life, wherein they save the, the elect, save themselves and the light um, in the world, that by participating in that salvation process, the hearers uh, accumulate merit such that their next life, they will reincarnate it in a stronger and better state. They are also refashioning themselves. They are also, to some extent, trying to collect themselves. That is, to collect the light around them, to refashion themselves as much as possible into the image of Christ. The hearers just have an understanding that in this lifetime, they will not yet do it uh, perfectly or anyway near perfectly, such that they will attain salvation in the hereafter. Um, um, where am I going? Oh yes, yeah, so obviously the most important thing to for reestablishing a Manichaean church 
is to have both hearers and elect. Now it's you know it's a it's a daunting thing to live anything near the elect life, even if it's somewhat relaxed for the modern age. But as as as, as um, Providence would have it, uh, Ryan Appleyard um, um, is um, he is preparing, as it were, um, for the next life. And uh, as part of that, you know, he um, is 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 not working, you know, he's living in absolute poverty, he is um, no longer with family, he is um, dedicating himself to a life of prayer and teaching, he has done immense work on the Ecclesia in terms of meditations and managing the website, and he's dedicating himself to a a we have I don't know if it's been decided a, either a strictly vegan or vegetarian life. So, so it somewhat reminds me a little bit of the of the Cathars, um, in that you had of course the parfait and the um, you know the the perfect right the their elect class and the credence. Um, the believers, the hearers, right? The auditors, like in, in Manichaeism. Uh, but what often happened is when a an auditor was was dying or approaching death, you know, you know, there was a a, a, a professional class of parfaits or perfects, right? And that lived the life of the perfect and ministered and stuff throughout their whole lives. But then there was a class that as they were approaching, uh, a group of those, they were approaching death, they'd receive the consolamentum, which is what would make one a, a perfect, and then they'd be bound to the obligations imposed on the perfect. Um, and they would just, as in their final days, they would live as a perfect in the hope that then they would uh, uh, escape the material world. Um, so, Similarly, Ryan, who is in the last part of his life, is going to to live according to the three seals. And myself, Ryan, and Oscar are going to get together and we are going to talk about what it is in the modern day to be a Manichaean, um, what the elect life will look like, what the life of the hearers will look like, and we will keep you all informed about this process. And we are hoping that that you will help us in reviving a sort of neo manichaean presence uh, in the world today. Um, and you, so, so you might ask yourself, what what can Manichaeism bring? You know, any sort of Manichaeism bring to the world today? Let's say, you know. The other world religions, like Orthodox or mainstream Christianity, Islam, uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, etc., don't bring to the world today, right? Um, and of course, on the one hand, we we could talk about Manichaeism is a a um, uh, uh, syncretistic religion, the fact that. It brings all the good things in these religions, the truth in them, uh, together, um, recognizing the validity of, of truth um, and divine messengers outside uh, of it in every culture before the advent of Manny. But also, and most importantly, I think, is that above and beyond you know, all of these religions, you know, Manichaeism has a sense of uh, the divine in everything and everyone, mixed, of course, with darkness, but but present, scattered throughout, such that the, one of the key virtues, I would say, to the Manichaean 
is compassion. Um, um, compassion on a level that you do not see, I would say, in, say, Orthodox mainstream Christianity, which much like the Judaism of Christ's time, uh, and that came before it and after, is in many ways a very legalistic faith. Even when it teaches justification by faith alone, it often teaches that um, either this faith is more or less a work because it's something you must do, you must must choose to believe, and therefore you're better than other people who do not choose to believe, right? Because you somehow made a choice. Or when it does make faith a gift from God, properly speaking, it understands that uh, if you truly believe, right, it will say certain works will follow such that as evidence of true belief, right? Um, such that if you're not living in a certain way, etc., um, they can uh, Christians can become very suspicious of your faith and very judgmental of one another, and you create this hierarchy in the church, right? With certain people looking down others or suspecting others of being elect or non-elect, of being Christians in good standing or not being believers or not. Whereas in Manichaeism, we understand, again, we all have light and darken in us, but we choose not only to identify with the light in ourselves, but in dealing with other people, we recognize that the darkness or the sinfulness or the failures in their life are not what define them. That is not who they truly are. It is the light in them that it defines who they truly are. And, you know, it's that light in them that we're working to save and salvage in everyone, uh, why we respect everyone, um, and why we don't believe anyone, even the elect, are inherently better than someone else. Because the light in them that is worthy of reverence is also the light in each of us that is worthy of reverence and salvation. Because that light is a part of God who is light. So I think that that message of compassion, compassion for others and compassion on oneself, you know, because again, when we, we sin, we recognize that's not really us. As Paul said, it is no longer, um, you know, he says it's no longer, um, well, there's two things he says, you know, it's, it's, it's not, but most of all, I want to emphasize on Romans 7, where he's, he recognizes that there's a law in him that's at war with the law in his mind. And that which he wants to do according to the internal man, right? That's the new life, the new man, Christ, whose pattern we're being conformed to, he doesn't do. But the evil that he does not wish to do, that he does, okay? And he says, oh, who de will deliver me from this body of death, right? The flesh, the material principle of darkness, okay? So we recognize that sometimes we do things contrary to what our real self wants to do. And so we have compassion and mercy on ourselves. So I think that that Manichaeism can, can bring um, to the world. And I hope you will assist us in, in getting out a, a message of uh, mercy, compassion, and also a message of hope as we do teach that there's hope for the light in us and all of us, hope for its redemption and restitution to a realm that is devoid of all darkness, all suffering, all death, all, all misery, all condemnation and judgment and hypocrisy and pride. Um, so um, may you be blessed. I, I will link, provide a link to the Ecclesia of Light, and I hope you consider encouraging this ministry. Uh, be well, and may the Father of Greatness bless you.